So come on in, sit down. I'm looking a little different. When was, and the lighting is horrible. I do apologize, but I'm home alone today and I got the whole house to myself and I think I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. And I'm doing some different things if you may have noticed on my channel. And today I'm going to talk about the things that I have watched on Netflix, Hulu, and Disney. And since we're doing movies, I thought I'd glam it up a little bit. And this is the first time you have seen any of my videos in full makeup and sort of hair done, but definitely down, all down. Like I don't think I have any where it's all completely down. So anyway, I'm Miss Jenny. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for stopping by if you're new. And of course you can click the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up. And I want to talk about some, before I even get started on this, there is a show coming up. It's December 17th on CBS Access. It is The Stand by Stephen King. And it's going to be a nine-part series, so I'm going to be watching that one. And if you are a Stephen King fan, in the comments below, give me some kind of scary emoji, a ghost, a vampire, a devil, whatever you want. But I want to know how many Stephen King fans we have out there. Sadly enough, I did not watch any, I don't think scary movies in the last month but these are things that I watched in November so I'm gonna start with Netflix I had to write them all down um, the first thing I watched was Ratchet which I guess it could be considered scary um, it's Sarah Paulson they did it as a series and it is the time well okay so it's about Nurse Ratchet who was the villain in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest which I watched that one too I've watched that many times um, but it's about her story before she went to the mental hospital where that story, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, takes place. So it's her prequel. Um, the other one that I watched was, um, I think it's called American Murder. It's the Chris Watts story. And um, that one's kind of a documentary. I think it was written mostly from the perspective of Shanann's family. This is a true story that happened. It was all over the news and um, it was really good and really interesting. I've been following that case, which little FYI, I have a podcast called I Survived Childhood. I'm on a bunch of them, but the main ones are Spotify and Anchor. And I do, um, I told my story about being abused, but um, I'm also starting to do some little news clips about um, some things mostly so far it's been children but I have one coming up about a woman who was um, murdered by her baby daddy and if you want me to do something about Chris Watts go ahead and put that down below too and I'll put that on the podcast and if you want um, I can put the link to the podcast in the description as well I also watched The Social Dilemma and this was recommended by somebody that I watch I can't remember her name I'm so sorry I'd put her her channel down below as well but the social dilemma and um that was really interesting there was some uh dramatized parts of it where um it explains how social media uses different tactics to keep you engaged and keep you viewing and how um it sucks you in so that was that was a interesting uh show and you might want to watch that one um i watched Kevin Hart, zero F star star K's given. He did a stand up in his home and it was pretty, it was, it was good. He had a lot of things to say about being over 40 and just how his life goes, you know, and it was neat because, um, he did a, um, little story about how he wanted to be like, Seinfeld and he had gone to Seinfeld's house and something happened there and I'm not going to say it because it'll give it away but um it was it was a cute little show and uh Jingle Jangle that's new this is a Christmas show it has Forrest Whitaker in it um it was a little slow for me but I like Forrest Whitaker the kids were great in that movie and there's some cute lines lots of songs it, it was a nice little holiday show then I watched uh, Queen's Gambit. That is a series. I can't remember how many episodes are in it, but it was really, really good. And I know how to play chess like an amateur, like a, like a beginner, okay? So that part of it was 
on a technical level over my head, but they made it so that you could understand, even if you didn't understand chess, how to play the game. And they did a phenomenal job with that. Um, the, it, it chronicles her life when she's in an orphanage through to when um, she grows up and how her competing in the chess world went. And the only problem I had with that, unless there's going to be a season two on it, they really went into a lot with her addiction struggles. And I felt like they just kind of left that hanging. But as far as being a woman and having confidence and the time frame that this all took place, I really liked that. And then the other thing that I really liked, once she became a woman and started making some money, the clothes. I really loved the fashion that she, she wore. And it was like um, from the 60s. So she, she did a lot of classic clothes. But she went through this funky little, almost like her makeup was kind of Twiggy-ish, if you know who Twiggy is from the 60s. It was, it was pretty cool. I liked that one. And then I watched Hillbilly Elegy, and that was kind of a sad story. Um, it's about three generations, a grandmother, mother, and the children. And the mother had a baby very, very young, and her struggles, and she had some addiction issues, and how it all affected everybody. And the grandmother's trying to be supportive and you know, to everybody with their problems. And um, it, was, it was a good story. Then I watched Snowden. I watched that one just the other day. Um, it actually took me a couple days to watch it because I kept falling asleep. Not that the show was boring, but it's something I was watching as I was going to bed and you're not supposed to do that. And I'm going to be doing a motivation on getting sleep and rest. So I'm a hypocrite just so that you know. But anyway, that one was really interesting. And I remember when, okay, so he basically was a whistleblower about um, the government being able to spy on um, people through their their devices, through their phones, through their laptops. Even when the laptop was off, the eye would come awake, but you wouldn't know it because no lights came on. And they could see, you know, even if you were in your bedroom getting, you know, ready to get in the shower, taking your clothes off and things like that, and just getting into, um, into your personal life without your knowledge. And... I didn't really pay that much of attention to it because when this news first came out, I'm like, oh gosh, another conspiracy, conspiracy. But after watching this movie and understanding a little bit more about how he got involved in this through his career and the things that he noticed and how he found out about things, um, it, it was definitely um, worth watching and I did a little research on him afterwards and it's kind of sounds to me based on what I've found so far that this is still happening sad to say but something else to think about with the social dilemma um, I watched the trial of the Chicago 7 that was a series as well that is a landmark case about um, and I think this one's very um Apropos for some of the things that are happening in our society right now with the civil unrest and so it was about you know that kind of thing and the civil rights and and what people have a legal right to in the United States of America and um, corruption in the legal system it, it, and this is also a true story so that one's a really good one to watch if you want to know some things about our history and civil rights and and um, the legal process and how to demonstrate peacefully whatever um i watched the christmas chronicles one and two and i had watched the christmas chronicles one previously and um it that's just such a sweet little christmas um story about being a true believer and of course the little girl and it was the true believer and they met santa claus and that's um kurt douglas and at the end of the Christmas Chronicles 1, Goldie Hawn, you know, they're together. She makes a little cameo appearance at the very end of Christmas Chronicles 1 um, as Mrs. Claus. So in Christmas Chronicles 2, she has a much more predominant part in, in the show. And the little girl from the first one, she comes back. And she's kind of not liking Christmas that particular year. And she ends up at the North Pole with Santa. And, of course, everything turns out great at the end. It's just sweet. And then the last one 
<coughs> excuse me, that I watched, not necessarily the last one, but the last one on my list for Netflix is Rush Beyond the Lighted Stage. Now, if you don't know, I am a retired Band-Aid and I live with a musician and I spend a lot of time with musicians and, um, but I never went to a Rush concert and I, um, I kind of like their music, some of it, you know, but it, I wasn't a diehard Rush fan. And this documentary was really interesting. And, you know, this particular band is not like normal bands in the way that they behave. They're musical geniuses, I think. And they were nerds. They were really nerds. And they just stayed nerds, you know. But the cool thing was that they would go out with these you know, when they were starting, they would go out with these big headliners of the day. And then after the concert, everybody's going out partying, trying to get, you know, a girl and different things. And they would go back to their room and read. And knowing that, now I understand a lot of their lyrics more. Like, you, you, if you really listen to Rush, you know that there's a lot of literary references in their music. But now I get it even more. So, and then it was really... Um, one of the things that came out in this documentary that I, I totally, totally respect, have new respect for them, the drummer, who was really, really good. I mean, his drum kit goes all the way around him. He's sitting, my cat's wrecking the house, in a circle of drums. He's got the biggest drum kit I've ever seen. Phenomenal. And um, he actually went to study under somebody else to learn more. And they explained all that. So that was really cool to get a, a perspective on how that all works because drumming's not just bump 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 you know the rhythm of the song it also um you have to watch it just go ahead and watch it it's really good now on hulu here's another big one that i just watched and it was run sarah paulson's also in this one and i cannot remember the actress's name shame on me because i should have written this down she this is this is um one of the cool things about her is she's actually a disabled person so their story line behind this is there's a mom and a daughter and the daughter's disabled and their life together and some things come out that I don't want to say too much because it's kind of another hot topic that has been in films and on the news recently um, about um, relationships that mo certain mothers have with their children. Well, okay, so I'll just tell you. No, I am, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to watch it. But it's a thriller and it's really good. The only thing... The only thing that I would say about this is that, well, two things. I felt that it was a little rushed, but that's after watching another show with a similar, similar theme, which was very well done, but then I didn't watch it in November. I watched it back in the spring. And then, um, the okay, so the girl that is the handicapped girl, she the, she's a new actress, so I, I don't hold this too much against her, but there were times when she had to do things with her mouth because she had to take something out of it. And I felt like her motions were a little bit exaggerated, that it was just a little bit too dramatic. But other than that, it was a good story and definitely worth watching. Then I watched Foxfire, which is kind of an old movie, but I had never seen it before. This is about a group of young girls, and it has a young Angelina Jolie, and her hair's cut really short in this movie, or the wig or whatever she had, her hair's short. Very cute. You know, I, I like her. Angelina Jolie she's she's really good and I thought she was going to be kind of a biatch but she's not really what she was was kind of a um transient that came into town she's still young she was a teenager and she started going to school but she had nobody to care about her and she makes friends with these other girls that are kind of the the misfits of um the school but it turns out that one of the teachers is also abusing these girls so she kind of helps them fight back and and that's a, another good one um, This Is Us has started. The new season has started. They didn't have one during the election, and that was a disappointment. Um, but I have been following This Is Us since they came on. Let me know down below if you're still listening to this video, if you like This Is Us. And I do watch The Connors. It's okay. It's light. I kind of miss Roseanne, but it's... I don't think it's as good, honestly, as when Roseanne was there. I don't know if it's the writers or what, but um, it's still funny. It's just, you know, a half-hour show. It's not, it's okay. Now, Disney Plus. And, you know, with Disney Plus, 
if you get Disney Plus and you pay, I think fourteen ninety nine a month is the rate, um, you get Hulu with that. And um, I don't watch it all the time because they don't seem to turn over their movies as much, but I do watch it periodically and I like their documentaries. So I watched four documentaries on that one and they were all really, really good. One is The Ultimate Viking Sword and basically what they did was recreate a sword from the Vikings. Now the thing about this sword is they found out that the technology that it took to make the steel the way that it was when the Vikings had it was like a thousand years or a hundred years. I know. I think it was like, I don't know. It was way before the time when they should have had it and how to, how to temper the steel to make it as strong. But this, um, this sword, um, was like the Cadillac of the swords. And, um, it, there was a, a, a current day iron worker or, you know, um, what do they call blacksmith who went through making a sword now the way they used to make it then. And so he explains step by step as you go through it, each process that he's made, like even making the stones to make the oven, to, to get the, um, smelt the iron, I guess that's the word smelting, um, to get the, iron to make you know all the way from start to finish he did it all in the same way that they would have done in the viking times and it was just so interesting and one of the things that came out that i found interesting was that the sword had a name the name of it which is some name i can't pronounce but um if it was written one way it was genuine if it was written another way it was fake so they even had um, counterfeit swords way way back you know so but the name if you saw the name on the sword as somebody was carrying it you knew that you were in trouble okay with that and they were very expensive that was another thing then I watched Pompeii Secrets of the Dead and this one was really interesting too because they they've gone back you know, if you don't okay so Pompeii was destroyed by Mount Vesuvius it had it's a volcano and exploded and erupted and wiped out this whole town but there were they have found bodies a long time ago that were kind of encased and so what they've done is they've they've gone back to re-examine these bodies with cat scans and they found out that when they were first um first found they were kind of grouped together and there were stories created about them i guess to make the story more interesting but they found out that it really was not true um that what the original stories were were not true based on forensic things that they could see now so that was that was an interesting one as well then i watched back to the titanic um so they've gone back 15 years it's been 15 years since the last time somebody's done a dive down so they're looking at how much the titanic has disintegrated um they've been able to look at things that they haven't been able to look at before they did a comparison between how the front of the titanic is is decaying much slower than the back but the back really got beat up a lot more and they found guggenheim's um his his room i guess i whatever, whatever cabin whatever they call it um they found him so guggenheim was one of the famous people that was on the Titanic when it sank and he was the one if you watch the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet he was the one who said we're gonna die with dignity and you know had gotten fully dressed and ready to go so that's that's the significant of him also the Guggenheims have a museum in Washington DC that is an art museum and it's part of the Smithsonian if you ever get a chance to go see it I highly recommend it it's a really phenomenal art museum and it's more contemporary not um renaissance or anything like that um and then the last one that i watched was lost on everest and so this one was really interesting they were talking about the well basically the gist of it is they were going up to find i think the guy's name is selby um he was the assistant to george mallory now mallory was the first person to climb to Everest. He never made it to the summit. Edmund Hillary made it to the summit. And I remember, it's been a while since they found 
Mallory's body. Um, but they knew it was him. They actually went down to where his body was and turned back his collar and it says G Mallory on it. So they knew that was him. But the, the purpose of the expedition um, was to find his camera because Mallory had done a really good job documenting this trip that they were taking trying to get up and um, they knew that the camera was not with his body. So also Mallory was supposed to be a landmark. You know, there's bodies on Everest that are landmarks. Um, because if you do, if you fall on Everest or something happens to you, very, very rarely will your body be removed. Although I think now they're they're starting to remove some of them. But him, they, they went ahead and buried him. He was frozen and mummified and they, they put rocks on top of him. So you can't see him any longer. But they, they had um, some, all the scientific things that they put together to try to figure out where his, his assistant was because they're thinking that the camera was probably with him because he would be the one taking pictures of Mallory as he made his ascent. And um, they, I won't tell you the end of it, but that's what the purpose of the show was. And it was, um, it was very enlightening. I will tell you this, I am never going to at, um, Mount Everest. I don't like the cold. It's just not on my bucket list. So when I learn about it, it's gonna be through a documentary. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what you're watching down below if you're still here. And let me know if you like these kind of things. I can do one again next month. I can also do one that, um, things that I'm reading. I do a lot of audiobooks though, more audiobooks than written word. So. Um, I'll see you again. Bye-bye.